Welcome to the Parker's Cars YouTube channel. You join me in a 2018 Cupra Ateca. And if you're asking the question, what the hell's going on and who the hell am I? My name is Paul Wallace and I run the Supercars of London YouTube channel. Over the last six months, I've been running this exact car as my daily driver on the long-term loan of fleet with Parker's Cars. I've done around 7,000 miles in this car and I could go on for days talking about all of the good bits about this car. 300 PS. 400 newton meters of torque, 1600 kilograms weight with a driver. All wheel drive, DSG box, zero to 60 in 4.9 seconds. This is the best car that you can buy in the sports utility market. I disagree. The Teco Cooper is a brilliant performance SUV, but it's not the daddy because this is, it's the Porsche Macan. In Macan S spec, it's got a three litre, 354 horsepower V6 engine, and it's got all the practicality and benefits of an SUV, with all that Porsche know-how from one of the very best sports car manufacturers on the planet. Hey, buddy. How's it going? Very good, thank you. Nice say out there. Whoa, no, 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 no. This is not a say out. Okay. As you can tell from the exterior badges, we've got a Cupra. Yeah, but be honest, how many people have actually asked you what kind of car that is and they haven't recognized any of the badging? A lot. How many people have thrown up watching you drive this up? Or watching your gold wheels more. Like, look at it, there's gold there, or bronze. There's bronze around here. It's just festooned with bits of aftermarket It's what, it's what you call an element of class with a lot of hotness. It is yeah. a good looking car, much better looking than that. This is a Porsche, Explain. Paul. This is a Porsche Macan S. Oh, I know it's, I know it's a Porsche, just not the big one. Yeah, but that's, that's, that's too heavy. This, you know, like with the porridge, this is exactly the right temperature. It looks like porridge. <laughs> well, the colour's an exterior thing, and it's quite choice, I admit, but it's mamba green. It's an optional colour. Thank God. I'm not sure where you want to be seen in that. This is what it's all about. If you want people to turn heads for the right reasons, mm. lo and behold, a I mean, black, black magic Cooper Ateca. Who doesn't like a black car? Well, in 40 degree heat, I'm sure you're having a fabulous time. Oh, right? aircon works perfectly. It's fantastic. Anyway, aircon and colours aside, I think we should find out which car is best. I mean, I'm feeling quite confident. Okay. But to give your Don't car, to give your car a fighting chance, I've got a number of tests in mind, and the first one of which is curb appeal, because that is a massive part of buyers' decisions when they get cars like these. It's got to look good, it's got to turn heads. So you have a massive Instagram following. As we all know, you never talk about it, but you do have a massive Instagram following. So I reckon, let's do a poll. This car or this car. Okay. Pictures of both, see which one wins at the end of this test, and then we'll know which one turns the most heads. And it won't just be our slightly biased decisions. <laughs> well, I'm confident because black cars work well on Instagram. So I'm going to grab my phone, take the photo on Instagram, and we'll see who wins. <laughs> I'm going to move my car because I feel like it's not its best, at its best. When, when are you going to take a picture of this car? No, I'm, I'm just going to Photoshop it in somewhere at the end. There you go, that's probably the one, isn't it? Yeah, no, that's fine. Which yeah, one's I mean, better? I mean, you can't really... Well, which, which do you prefer, the new Macan 9, 2019 or Cooper? If you can't see the Macan, Google it. Picture time done, we decided to take a closer look at the car's interiors, starting with the Ateca. James. Paul. Oh. Welcome to the world of luxury the sweat and box. performance. I don't know whether you noticed, but you're now sat on Alcantara and leather with bronze stitching. Yeah, no, no, I'll give you that. That's quite nice, actually. That's quite tasteful. Um, and my overriding impression, though, is it's just like a say, a Teco again in here. It is, but there's a lot of piano black, which mm. accentuates luxury. Virtual cockpit as standard, which is arguably the best virtual cockpit I've ever experienced in a car. Better than Audi's? Yeah. It's, it's functional in here. It's, it's, it's got a nice layout. You've got some nice shortcut buttons there. What's, I, think that's, I think that's important to say because so much so now things are becoming touchscreen. Whilst we do have a touchscreen screen, mm -hmm. also enables us to just dive into media, nav, car, voice, radio media, which is 
pretty much all I ever use, but you've also got a menu shortcut button so you can get back to the menu when you need, or you can just touch screen it. I'm not gonna be uh, overly critical here because this is actually quite a nice interior. It feels well made, it feels well laid out, but let's go and find out what the Meccan is like because that's that's where the treat is, really is. Come yeah, on, let's, let's check it out. I kind of feel like the Porsche is gonna beat this. Oh, how right you are, Mr. Wallace. Welcome to the sophistication of a, what are you doing? Just just breathing in the, the smell. Leather, the leather. The smell know. of wealth. Yeah, well, no, this, <laughs> is, no, this isn't the top of the range, Molly, but it doesn't mean you don't get a lovely interior. I mean, take this steering wheel, for example. It's a work of art. Look, you've got the metal bits here, nice rim, not too chunky like it is in the Cooper. I'm not fat shaming it, though. I like a chunky yeah. steering wheel. We've also got loads of buttons here, shortcut buttons, so you don't have to stab around on the screen. There is a lot of buttons. Do you think there's too many? Is that I'm getting that feeling from you? Knowing where Porsche have gone with the 992-911, you kind of get a sense of that's where it's going to go with yeah. this. I can see where you're going with that, and you are right. They probably are going to change it for the newer model, but some people like a good number of buttons, and there's no denying that this car has got all the buttons <laughs> yeah. in the world. Yeah, it's a, a very mature, should we say. Yeah. Lovely build quality. Look at, this, yeah. look at the green stitching there. Well, yeah, I'm not going to comment on the colour combination and the spec of it, but it is a very nice place to be. Exactly. And Sport Chrono package. That lovely analogue clock up there. That also improves what the clock doesn't, but the Sport Chrono <laughs> package as a whole improves the performance. You actually cut a little bit off 0 to 62 mile an hour. Really? As well. it does, I yeah. thought it was just a stopwatch. A couple of tenths. No, no, it's not just a stopwatch. <laughs> There's a Sport response button. There's the Sport mode on the Sport modes on the steering wheel. You can change to the the mode there, it's easy to reach button. It's fabulous, it's an ergonomic treat in here. Yeah. Pretty sure I had Paul on the rocks there, but the proof of the pudding is how these cars drive. So to humour him, I got behind the wheel of the Ateca and headed for the twisty stuff. James, we find ourselves on a beautiful country road having just exited the village behind us. I mean, it's a very nice car to put it around in. There's no intrusive noises coming from outside. It's a comfortable and relaxing environment for when you want to drive slow. Yeah, you're actually 100% correct. I've got no qualms with the way this thing drives around in town. It's, as you said, it's refined. The ride right quality for a car with 19 inch wheels is pretty good. It's, it's not, not bad. bad, it can clunk a bit, but that's to be expected. And steering's light in this mode. This feels like, and I've said it a couple of times, but it feels like a say a Tekka. It doesn't just drive like one, it does feel like one as well. So where does it actually become a Cupra? Well, James. Oh god, what are you doing? <laughs> there is six driving modes down here. I had to look six, down to, six. Count, to count because there are so many. We've got a sport mode, which stiffens everything up, but the one mode that we're gonna really use today on this road is of course the Cupra mode, which is its raciest setting, right. sharpens everything up. Everything's recalibrated. You'll be able to feel the steering that much more stiff, mm. and the chunky steering wheel really comes into play. You, you, you like that chunky steering wheel? Don't I you? do. I do. I'm a big fan of it. Um, but the four-wheel drive, it just grips and goes, and I feel like it's the perfect amount of power to put through the gearbox and the drivetrain. Okay. Yes, you can feel upshift farts. You're gonna get some burbles on the overrun as well. It's got character as well, this car. It feels clinical. Yeah. But not in a bad way, because it's just no fuss about it. The four-wheel drive system, the four drive, as soon as you put your foot down, the power's on the ground and you're off in the distance. There's yeah. no sort of hesitation or anything. And the gearbox as well, it changes. Well, as I'm asking you to tip down, changes are coming quickly. On long distance drives, I'm averaging late 30 MPGs as well. And on a drive like this, you're probably gonna be on around 20. I kind of get the feeling that this chassis, it could take a bit more power, actually. Yeah. It feels- Well, you can now. Yeah. You can order ABT tuning pack. You can actually spice this up, still with the manufacturer's warranty. So whilst the Macan S has a little bit more power, yeah. you can now, from Cupra get an additional 30 to 40 brake horsepower with an apt tuning pack that is still warranty friendly. So is that like Mountie with Ford basically? Same yeah, sort of come on. Do you want to buy one? I get a good discount, I can get some commission. We can split it. 
There you go, there's the advert. I thought he was going to come along at some point. I mean, I've got to be honest, there isn't much wrong with this car. I think the way that you drive it is just, it just does everything very, very well. But maybe that is a problem in that it's so capable, in that there's so much grip, there's so much traction, the handling's very capable. It never feels like you're really pushing it. It just feels like it's got so much more capability than you have or you should be using on the road. Yeah, yeah. Is the fun a bit lacking? Is that unfair? No, I don't think that's unfair. I think that's probably the only box that's, that's it's half full. I'd say it's not fully ticked. I'd say it's half full because yeah. it does tick so many box, boxes so well and it's so usable that actually it's a little bit expected. Yeah. You know what the car's going to do and it just does it with ease. And I kind of feel like a lot of modern cars these days have that characteristic that there isn't enough imperfections to have its own personality. It feels like no, it's no. just a computer on wheels. Yeah, yeah, you're not wrong there at all. Um, but I think at the end of the day as well, this, we can't forget, I know it's a performance SUV, but it is an SUV and it's got to do what an SUV has to do. So there's only so far you can push it. It's not a sports car. Being this tall, it's never going to be. No, but it's got the driver dynamics of something that you would think is much smaller. Yep. And I think the weight does play into it. With this car, it is quite light. It's under 1,600 kilograms dry weight. So. It is a re really, really impressive piece of technology, but you've driven the Cupra. I want to drive the Porsche. I bet you do. Because you're talking a big game about that car. I'm still quietly confident, but I've been enlightened. Okay. We'll go back and drive one. Well, you'll drive the Porsche, and then, then you'll see. <laughs> Okay, Paul, we've driven, well, I've driven the Cooper Ateca. Now it's your turn to drive the Mamba Green Porsche <laughs> Macan S. Here I we are. I can't work out where the, where the bonnet ends and the grass starts. <laughs> well, hopefully we're not gonna be going over that much grass because although this is an SUV off-roader and it's got an off-road button there, oh. I don't really fancy trying it with those nice alloy wheels. Don't know about you. No. But, um, on road though, that's where it's important. And first impressions? First impressions, I mean, this really is because this is my first mile that I've yeah, done yeah. in a Macan S. I've only ever driven a Macan GTS, which was the old model. So I don't know too much about this, but immediately you can feel the weight and the steering is very Porsche. Mm. It feels like an expensive watch. You know when you pick up an expensive watch, yeah. you can feel the weight? Versus the Cupra, yeah. you can really feel the extra value in this. You know where the money's been spent. Yeah. yeah. The only thing that I think you might want that it hasn't got is it hasn't got the sports exhaust system. So it sounds a bit more muted. The V6 isn't as sonorous as you'd like, but it's got the Porsche active suspension management. It's got Porsche torque vectoring. It's got the sport chrono package. So as a driver's car, it's got pretty much everything you'd want. Everything, yeah. The power delivery is a totally different experience. Yeah. Like, I just look down at the speedo there and I'm like, yep, time to slow down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's creamy, yet still. It is, really it is. It's got an air of the 911 Turbo S mystery about how fast that car is. Mm. It's more of a sort of Rolls Royce power delivery, where the Cooper just puts it down like a Golf R because, it's, again, it's the same engine, it's yeah. the same four wheel drive system. It just puts it down, and in that car, you know, it just goes bang and you're off. In this, it just applies with a bit more finesse. I Elegance, think. Elegance, shall we say. Shall we say, yeah. I'm gonna say that... You're making me nervous. What are you gonna say? You don't like it? I'm not sure I like the pedals. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. In terms of uh, a quality feel, yeah. a luxurious cabin, Yeah. And I know that it can handle the corners really well because the dynamics, the suspension and the ride quality is amazing. Yeah. But the brake and the accelerator pedal are a little bit numb. Do you not maybe think that that numbness, you could get used to it maybe? Or is potentially, it genuinely? Potentially. Because actually, I'm just saying this, you're right. They do feel a little bit off when you've got in out of another car, out of any other car actually and got in this. Yeah. There's always a differentiation, but it did feel, especially 
pronounced in this, I've got to be honest, so you're not wrong at all. I wasn't expecting that. From a Porsche, I kind of like to feel that I'm connected. And your feet are a connection point to the car, oh, yeah, so it's yeah. your hands and your feet that you really need to feel everything through. I think now, having driven the car for like 10, 15 minutes and got a real feel for it, there is no denying that Porsche have accomplished the characteristics that are so prominent in all of their other models in this car. Yeah. It's got that DNA running through it. You know, even if you're blindfolded, you get in this and you go, ah, yeah. this is a Porsche, even though it's a very different kind of Porsche. It feels familiar. So, you've had plenty of time behind the wheel. You've, I think you've enjoyed yourself. I have. But there can only be one winner as to which car we would buy, which car we think is best. So, we should pull over and yeah, come to a decision really, I think that's important. Yeah, I think let's head back and uh, come up with a verdict. So, we've driven both, we've poked, we've prodded. Which is your favourite one, Paul? To drive? Yeah. The Porsche. There we go. You can definitely feel the Porsche personality coming through. You can feel that it's more expensive. But at the same time, what Cooper have done, yeah. this is their first car. Yeah. And whilst they've taken the Ateca as a donor car from Seat, if this is what is to come with the future of the brand, it's quite exciting. It's a good sign, isn't it? It is because, a good sign. Because, again, this is the car that I'd have. It's the car that you'd have if money was no object, but and this is where the finance figures come in, on an equivalent deal, which is correct at the time of filming, that is about 200 quid a month cheaper, the base spec Cupra to this Macan S. That's about 200 quid a month cheaper. Mm -hmm. And if you take the badge out of it, is it 200 quid a month less car? I'm not so sure. I think you can see where the money's spent with yeah. the Porsche. You can really feel a sense of how expensive this car is. But what the Cooper is actually capable of doing on the roads, the performance that you get, and yeah, there are a little bit of plastic bits inside the car, but as soon as you get past that, as much as I would always take a Porsche to sit on my driveway, because who wouldn't? Yeah. You've got to consider that. Also though, and most importantly, I nearly forgot this, the pole. What happened yeah. in our poll? Because we started that at the start of this video. We said, which one would you rather have? We've now got the results. Paul, do you want to tell us? No. No, you don't. <laughs> Basically. Take from that what you will. <laughs> no, no, no. I will divulge. So the Porsche, even though it wasn't that... Take that smug look off your face already, okay? Because... Does this mean that... 60 60%, 40%. 60%, 40%. But when you consider around 10,000 people voted in the two hours, so that still got 4,000 votes out of 10,000. And that's a Porsche. Yeah, okay, that's, yeah. So, and I did get a lot of DMs as well saying, I voted Cooper because I'm a Seat Cooper fan. Did you really? Yep. That's kind of a win. It's kind of not a win. <laughs> it's kind of not really a win, but I see what you mean. That is actually very good showing for that car. There's a cult following, and I think in the next five years... You can't knock it. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of cool stuff coming out of these You cars. can't knock it. Yeah. Two really good cars. You're going to be lucky to put either one on your driveway, regardless of which our favourite is. But I'm sure you have a favourite, so let us know what it is. There's a vote, there's a poll up in the top right-hand corner of the screen now, whether you want the Cooper Ateca or you want the Macan S. Either way, tune in for more fun next time with Paul and Parker.